Okay, coming back for the second half of uh, the 11 a.m. turn, turn 8 of Antietam Glory 3, 160th playthrough uh, of the Antietam campaign. Second half of the 11 a.m. turn, we're looking at uh, five more chits to come out. First half had Hooker and Jackson um, kind of working each other over a bit up here to the north with Jones here trying to attack and Hooker repulsing them. And Hooker recovering a little bit. <clears throat> the rest of, of uh, Jackson kind of um, kind of just recovered and just kind of holding the line there uh, at the moment. So moving on here, uh, next chit we have is Hayes Artillery. Okay, so we've got two batteries over here <coughs> of uh, artillery here and here. We'll take shots across the. Um, Across the river. I think this first one, Reserve B, three, four, five, six, is going to target that artillery that drove off um, Howard's units up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Range six. It's going to be uphill, so it's going to be a minus one on the range uh, or on the terrain, and it's going to be a um, plus three for the strength. So it's going to be plus two in the end. Nine with a plus two on the dice. Rolls a six. That's a miss. So then we move on to the reserve C, which I think, again, we'll try targeting that same unit over here. This time it'll be downhill. It's not plunging, but downhill. So it'll be a four. It'll be a nine with a plus four on the dice. Rolls a zero. That's a miss. So that... Pretty much does it for Hayes' activation. And then coming down to the next one we've got is Longstreet again. So Longstreet's units. Um, again, to the south we have Walker. Uh, there's not much needs to happen down there. Uh, we'll zoom you out a little bit. There we go. Walker's units down here, I think, are in good position. Anderson's units over here, <coughs> again, in good position, but I think they'll have some of their artillery shoot. So if Anderson's artillery, um, he can't see Howard over here. He can't see Cedric. They'll try to shoot one, two, three. So it's a plus three downhill, but not a plunging fire. So it'll be nine with a plus three on the dice. Also two, that's a miss. Counter battery, uh, meaning Sedgwick's batteries fire back. There'll be a three uphill, so minus one, so two, and then we're in the range. Nine with plus two. That was a six plus two is eight, just short. Second shot, we're gonna have the same targeting the same unit with Anderson's up here, which is a plus two. It will be plunging fire, so plus three. Nine with plus three on the dice. Six plus three is nine. That's a hit. Cohesion test. Is a seven or less, and they get a seven. So <clears throat> everybody's in good shape for now. Um, so that will be it for Anderson's shooting. I don't think there's going to be any movement. Again, he's in really good shape. Uh, it's just a matter of keeping the Union troops back. So far, they have been, um, like I said, the AMs have, have conspired against the Union uh, this turn, uh, this game. So now we'll move on to the reserve artillery. Uh, reserve artillery down south is going to be fine. We'll just have these guys fire. Um, I think they'll target Brook over here. So one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> It'll be a plus four, and combined together make plus six, um, but they're short range, so it's minus one, so it puts it down to a five, but it is plunging fire back up to six, so it's nine with a plus six on the dice. Six plus six is twelve, so we get a cohesion check, seven or less, I roll a seven, so that's okay. We've got one more shot here. This reserve artillery firing at Howard B. 
So it's going to be um, plus 3 downhill, but not plunging fire. So 9 with a plus 3 on the back. 6 plus 3 is 9. It's a cohesion test. Howard B is a 1. Yeah, he's lost. And he will go into the withdrawn box. So second core is just being beaten back here very badly. Um, so that will do it for the artillery. That's Anderson. McClaws is in good shape back here. And um, leaves Hood to the north. And he's in good shape too. They've recovered and they don't really want to attack. So we'll just let just let them go with that. Like I said, they're in good shape here. Uh, really tough position as the Union starts losing more and more units to artillery fire to actually get anything going. So we'll see how it goes here. Next, Hayes. Again, Hayes' artillery. So that's this over here. Um, again, I think they'll target... Same unit, because if they can get that off there, maybe they can get up here. I don't know. It's a, it's tough. One, two, three, four, five, six. That'd be four with a plus, uh, or plus four. Nine with a plus four on the dice. Six plus four is ten. So there's a cohesion check on the artillery. Seven for the artillery. Roll a six. They're okay. Um, the unit underneath is a four. So he needs a four or less. Roll a three. So they're in good shape. Same targeting by the other gun back here. Uh, this time it'll be uphill, so it's going to be only be a plus two. Nine with a plus two on the dice. Seven plus two is nine, so the cohesion check. Artillery seven. Rolls a zero. Unit is a four. Rolls a zero. Good shape. They're in good shape. A lot of pounding, but they're holding. So that's all for Hayes, really. Uh, next one we've got is Sumner. Okay, let's see what we can do with him. Okay, artillery. Um, ooh, they got a clean shot up to here, but I'd rather take this guy out. Two, three. Uphill, so minus one, so it's going to be nine with a plus two on the base. Five plus two is seven. That doesn't get anything. Movement. So now here's where we'll exchange units. He'll come back for one. He'll come forward like so. Um, and then the other two units over here are going to try to recover. So top one is going to need a five. Rolls a six. Bottom one needs a six. Rolls a seven, of course. Yeah. So that's all for Cedric. Move over to French. Uh, his artillery, point blank fire, uphill. So it's going to be four plus two is six, minus one is five. So nine with a plus five on the dice. That's 14, so they actually uh, disorder them. That's useful. Um, but not at the moment, because I uh, can't recover. So, next, we've got movement. I think I want him to move. Uh, oh, wait a minute, what's back here? Yeah. He's going to move back. Of course, he's not going to be able to recover. Still got Richardson over here as well. Um, he can recover. He could move up. Over one, two, yeah, I just don't like that. 
firing on them. Uh, yeah, all of them are just fours. Four, four, four. He's the one I need to get back in good order. Now yeah, we'll try. He won't be able to. I think he'll move up one, and then two, three into there. Whichever right, a little bit more force when ready. And then, I think that's it. We'll just do these recoveries, him and him. So, uh, needs a three for Kimball. He gets a three. So he recovers. And then, um, Kimball B, he's a six. Calls a nine. So that will be all over there. Richardson. Oh, Richardson, let's see. He can't recover. He's okay. Yeah, he can't recover. He can recover. So I think it's just going to be recoveries because Richardson lost his artillery. So it's going to be him. Yeah, I think him to recover. So he's a six. back in good shape. <clears throat> okay, that's it. That's all for Sedgwick. Or, excuse me, Sumner. Last one is Stewart. Uh, that's our folks up here. Which we may have a little bit of artillery. I think Pelham will take a shot up here. It's going to be uphill. Um, strength of one, so it's going to be zero. And he misses. Then we're going to have Jones over here, plus 2, 8 plus 2 is 10, that's a hit. Um, so he's a, five, a 6, and he's a 6 or less, so he's a 4, so he's okay. I think that's going to do it, because I don't really see any benefit of moving um, Stuart. So... That's a short end to the uh, to the uh, eleven o'clock turn. Showing you the big overview again. It's it's still a rough situation for the Union. Um, we move on to eleven forty-five. Oh, wait a minute! I forgot to do one thing over here, and I'll remedy to that by zooming you in our withdrawal box. Got to see if we get some of these guys back. Right there. Okay, so we've got a couple of units. We've got Confederates have one unit here. Posey, he's a five. And he'll need a five or less to come back in. Rolls a two. So he comes back in. <clears throat> we'll have him deploy over here. And of course, he won't be able to recover. But I don't think that will be a big deal. All right. And then we've got one unit coming back down. Now for the Union, we've got uh, Anderson, who's a five. He rolls a nine, so he's lost. He's out of the game. And then two units coming down here, like so. Okay, so bringing you back over the board here, just to show you what we're looking at. Um, with everything. We've still got the, the Union holding off up here, but tough, tough shape. The first corps is very beat up. They just lost another unit. Um, now, the 12th Corps is kind of stagnant. Second Corps is just uh, it, it hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging units um, at the moment, um, just from artillery bombardment. So, 
not sure what's going to happen with them. Uh, we still have, of course, we still have over here, much like they did at the original battle, still have a lot of reserves. We've got the 6th, 5th, and just to the south here, the 9th Corps uh, sitting here, plus the cavalry uh, that are not engaged yet. But we're really hampered by, um, by the AMs and the lack of ability to get uh, uh, get multiple AMs. We've only got three AMs for the Union versus the full um, full set for the Confederates. So uh, that's enabled the Confederates over here to have Jackson actually push back and really hit Hooker hard um, and drive him back. So um, so we're gonna see. Uh, I'm not sure how much more I will continue on with this only because it seems to be now into a grind and if we don't get any more Union AMs going I can't see how even the attack on Burnside's bridge can develop um, at this stage because there's just so much to hold off uh, the Confederate attack up here and try to recover um, you know every turn uh, the Union units that are lost. Meanwhile, the Confederates are, are in a very strong position. A few losses, of course. You know, we've got a few here. You can see the red dots underneath, um, you know, in here. But um, I think we'll try for, you know, another turn. See how the uh, see how the AMs go. Um, may try to force a Confederate attack over Burnside's bridge, uh, Union attack over Burnside's bridge. Uh, to see if we can't get that going and maybe develop something over here because if 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 attack was successful and got over the bridge pushed Walker a bit you know that would force Anderson to swing around and probably commit McClaws to a defense over here uh, which would definitely keep uh, keep Jackson from continuing his, his attack and probably just put him on the defensive uh, over there. But that's a big if, because that means that the 9th and possibly the 5th Corps actually make it <coughs> down and over the Antietam, um, you know, to get in a position to attack, uh, attack Sharpsburg from the south. Um, and we also got the specter of, in one, two, three more turns, A.P. Hill making his appearance, um, on the Harper's Ferry Road, and uh, you know, attacking up that way as well. So um, we'll see how it goes. So thank you for watching, if you've been watching this, and uh, hope you're enjoying it. Um, I surely like this. I do like the system here. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, the dice giveth and the dice taketh away. And today, uh, these latest series, the the dice are not not looking good for the Union. So hopefully that'll change. But we'll see. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.